Hello, hello. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> Sir David the Bard, I'm uh, coming to you from uh, the Department of Immigration here in the United States. Uh, I just wanted to put my two cents in. Um, let me call my immigrants. <laughs> Allison, could you come here for a second? Immigrants, aren't they supposed to serve the white man? That's what it's all about, isn't it? My little immigrant, come here. I'm American. You're American, okay. What? That light turn off, it's in my eyes. This light, push out of the way. It's over there. Okay, and would you open up my curtains so I have a little bit of light? Thank you, little immigrant. I'm an American citizen. You're an American citizen. You're such a smart alley. Honey, lift it up with your hand. Like you said, I'm an immigrant. Well, now you're an immigrant. <laughs> when you screw up, you're an immigrant. And yeah. when you're okay, you're an American. Yeah. All right, little American. Let me see if I can turn this over where people can see it. I don't know if I can get that in close enough. I'm going to enlarge this, but I don't know. No? Allison, go hold this up to my camera so people can see your school picture. Just hold it up to the camera there. Oh, oh stop, stop! Back up just a Okay, good. No, closer. Very, very nice. Now, this is my littlest immigrant right here. American! American! <laughs> okay, precious. Take the picture somewhere safe. Uh, I wanted to do a show here on immigrants. Uh, Obama just um, made a speech uh, with an executive order um, allowing uh, many immigrants, 12 million I think now, able to stay in the United States without deportation for whatever a short period of time is. Of course, the Republicans are doing this. They've been doing that for eight years, you know, so let them do that. Anyway, let me tell you my experience with immigrants, okay? I was raised uh, in California, and um, I went to school there, Ventura, Ojai, Santa Barbara, and there's uh, agricultural uh, plantations, plantations, that's basically what they are, uh, in that part of the country, and the Mexican people would come across the border, I guess, I was a child, illegally, and they would be picking our oranges, and they'd be picking strawberries and um, lettuce and all kinds of beans and up in the uh, Napa Valley there they were doing grapes for wine and I was in high school I was in high school but the bard learns quickly the bard learns quickly I used to ride along the freeway and I would see these people out there like at 5 30 6 o'clock in the morning sunrise and they're bent over in those fields and they never stand up they never stand up. They just pick and pick because in those days the farmer paid them by the uh, bushel or by the package. And, you know, the more they pick, the more they earn. But it was always under minimum wage. And uh, sometimes the farmer wouldn't pay at all. And the, the group would move on to the next farm to harvest oranges or, or to harvest other uh, plants. Well, even in high school, I looked at that and I thought, just doesn't look right. Those people should be paid properly. Uh, they should have a bathroom. Why do they have to pee out in the fields? And uh, what about food? Do, do they have? To, what do they do for lunch? They're in the middle of nowhere. What do they do for lunch? And th these things were on my mind because uh, the bipolar, which is growing in me, and the the disgust for human behavior towards other humans. Well, pretty soon. Uh, Ch Chavez, Senior Sa Chavez, I can't think of his name now, uh, way back, way back, he was trying to unionize the uh, farm workers. How do you unionize people that can't read English, write English, don't have a telephone, and they all live in one room uh, in a house that the farmer gives them with uh, no electricity? So anyway, um, they began to protest a little bit, and so now the farmers decided to do something really, really nice. They bust them. They would bust them from where they lived to the fields. And I told you, it's only a one-way, well, it's a round trip, but it's only one place to pick them up because the farmer had a little farmhouse and maybe two or three bedrooms. There's 30, 40 workers in there. So anyway, um, I happened to uh, think, hey, the white man's, <laughs> he's being more fair. He's giving them a free bus ride.
I know now where the term comes from, throwing someone under the bus. I went up one day and looked at the bus that they were transporting. It was owned by the, uh, the, the farm uh, ranch, and there were no seats in it. <laughs> Not a damn seat in the bus. There were some orange crates that people could sit on. Of course, in those days, seat belts, they weren't required anyway, but these poor bastards were all crowded in there, and they go to two or three different farms. Like, they put 150, 200 people in a bus, all jam down on the floor and then get out onto the the uh, ranch, open the door, and they'd all just bow their heads and say yes and jump in the nearest uh, mud, blood, and the beer and start picking the strawberries. Well, I, I sometimes still hate being white. I'm, I'm ashamed. Uh, you know, we stole the land from the Indians. We made the Negroes pick our cotton. And we stole California from the Mexicans. Uh, and now we're treating the Mexicans like this uh, in California when I was in high school. Well, it, it got better. Pretty soon you started seeing portable uh, uh, bathrooms. The What do you call them? Uh, John John's? I, don't, I forget. I was in construction. But anyway, you could go in and close the door and actually go to the bathroom. And they had some food trucks that started to come out to the fields at noon. And uh, these Mexican men and uh, their wives and their children would gather around and uh, buy, mon uh, buy things off the food truck at exorbitant prices. Then the women started showing up in the fields, young girls and young men. And the wives started showing up with Coleman stoves and started cooking lunch so that their husbands wouldn't have to eat off of that roach truck. So anyway, uh, I've seen this progression over my life. Not with these eyes and these ears. Nothing I read, no, no political, nothing. I saw it with my own eyes how the white man in California treated those Mexican people. They couldn't vote. They couldn't um, have a decent place to live. They were illegal. They couldn't speak English. None of them spoke English. They all spoke Spanish and were humiliated because they didn't know how to speak English. Couldn't get a driver's license, couldn't get an ID, couldn't rent a house, couldn't get a utility brought in. Uh, had a hard time getting their children into schools, trying to bust their children, so none of them had cars. It was a nightmare for them. Yeah, and, and for me, I didn't think it was fair. But God, what am I, you know, 17, 18 year old kid? I can't do anything. I have to wait till I'm 70 and then come on the Bard show and pretend I'm the Bard. So anyway, I watched that um, evolution of hatred towards immigrants. Uh, then I worked in construction for many years in California. I was a glazer. I put the windows in high-rise construction buildings. And I'd look out the, the windows there and the openings and I would see all the Mexicans were doing the, uh, the uh, sprinklers and all the dirt, uh, the mud and the blood and the beer, planting the trees and beautifying the place. And I can't tell you how many times while I was working in construction somebody would scream, uh, ICE! ICE! <laughs> they scatter like bugs. Down below you can see hundreds of Mexicans scattering, jumping over fences, hiding under cars. They were illegal, but they were working their asses off. And they were beautifying America. And they were picking the food that we ate. And they made America a better place. Well, did America turn around and do shit for them? No. We just tore them away from their families and their kids, deported them, they had to jump back across the river or hide in the glove box of a car uh, from Tijuana and come across there in um, San Diego. So I've watched this. I've heard this. I had a, a bus driver in high school. I was probably 11th grade. And his med name was Fred De Leon. Obviously a Mexican name. In my high school, we only had one or two Mexicans. And uh, what was her name? Raquel. Raquel de Leon was his daughter. We teased, not we, I never did. I, I've never done this. They, the other children, teased the shit out of Raquel because she was uh, uh, Mexican. Her father drove my school bus, and we had whatever, 66 kids on it. And it wasn't me, it was the other kids. I'm ashamed that I didn't say something, but I didn't join in. And they would all yell, Fred, Fred de Leon, Mexico, Just tease the shit out of him. 
just tease the shit out of him. I remember one day, um, uh, what Rice, uh, Michael Rice, uh, Libby Rice. Oh, I had a little crush on Libby. Uh, Michael, uh, we had to go up this real steep hill, and Michael opened the emergency back door. All of the books on the floor <laughs> scooted down, went out the damn back door. And we're yelling, Fred, Fred, stop, we got to get our books. Michael jumps out the back door, runs up alongside the bus, pounds on the door, and Fred lets him in. Shit like that all day long for Fred, uh, just trying to uh, be a man to support his family. And his daughter was in an English-speaking school, and uh, they were breaking in to Ojai, a very rich white community. I've seen it! I've heard it! Well, as I grew up, I watched this evolution of how more and more Mexicans came into California and began to buy houses. Uh, some of them are now driving vans and their uh, cars to the fields. And they worked hard. They worked hard. And they should have been paid well. They worked. They weren't. So, now I'm in immigration. I immigrated my wife and two of my children uh, to the United States from the Philippines. Cost us twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 apiece to get them in here. Now I'm uh, immigrating her parents. Two more. This little girl here, let me see if I can <coughs> get up out of my chair. <coughs> this little girl right here, let me put her face up again. It's my Allison. Ooh. See there, there. Ooh, over here. This is one of my children. This is Allison. She's just about to turn 12. And when Allison was in the Philippines, uh, she had typhoid fever. She almost damn died. She was in a hospital. The hospital wouldn't let her out of the hospital uh, without paying the bo bill in full. All she needed was $25 of penicillin to save her life. I sent it. Jesus didn't send it. Jesus didn't do shit for Allison. I did. I sent the penicillin special delivery. I was the one that got her out of the hospital. And I'm the one that brought her little body to the United States. $5,000 my insurance company and I had to pay to fix a kindergartner's teeth. They were that rotten. They were that decayed because there was no milk and there was no uh, proper diet for Allison. Allison has always been in the 10th percentile for weight because she was malnourished in the Philippines. Well, I brought that little immigrant into our country and uh, yesterday I, we were doing something at the doctors and the waiter and she's now in the 15th percentile for weight. She used to be the smallest child in her class. Now there's three others that are smaller than her. She is now part of the uh, school committee or something for the sixth grade. And she's in charge of that. And, and I don't know what she does, but she's a leader. I went in and talked to the principal and the teachers. And yeah, she's a leader. Kids like her and she's a leader. Uh, she babysat Miley Jane for a year. Took her in at two months. Raised her till she was... Uh, a year old and walking. Allison has made a contribution to this country and she's an immigrant. My other little one, Abigail, she's 16. Just drove her car home. She's 16 years old. When she came here, she couldn't speak a word of English. Not one word of English. She has now been here eight years, seven years. She's now an A student at the high school. She now owns her own car. She now pays her own insurance and her own taxes, gas taxes and uh, car registration and car inspection, uh, etc. She has a driver's license. She actually passed and got a driver's license. Someone came up to her and said, my brother, not my brother, I don't have a brother. Uh, my son said, Abigail, do you want a job? Yeah, okay. She's now a courier. She makes $280 a week driving her car and picking up specimens from the veterinary clinics, taking them over to put them on the airplane and fly them uh, into Antec for uh, the veterinarians 
um, information back. She's making a contribution to the United States and she's an immigrant. The United States is treating her well and she's paying it back. Now my poor little wife Mercy, you know, she's poor because she married the bard. <laughs> Anyone who marries a bard usually divorces me, but Mercy, she didn't know she could divorce me because she was a Filipino citizen. <laughs> She's now an American citizen. She went through all the testing, memorized all the questions, and paid hundreds and hundreds of dollars to be sworn in as an American. The two girls are not Filipino anymore. They're Americans. And Mercy now is going on eight years. She's been working. The days that she came in, the first few days that she came into the United States, she started working. She's worked every, every day since. Never taken a sick day. Never been in late. Always showed up when they scheduled her. No regular days off. They tell her when to work, where to work. She shows up every time. And she's making that company money. They love her because they can't find Americans that aren't immigrants that are willing to work that hard. So I'm very proud of her and I'm very proud of the three immigrants uh, that I helped get out. Now I have uh, some renters and uh, no, not the mice. <laughs> the mice never paid any rent here. They just ate here for free. Kind of like the homeless people. But anyway, a little couple upstairs that um, I let rent at a cheap rent. She's from the Philippines. She is now a U.S. citizen. She's in school becoming a pharmacist. So when you talk about uh, Obama and giving chances to the immigrants, uh, I'm kind of prejudiced. I, I tend to support him 100%. The sadness and the, oh my God, the paperwork. I just sent off one of the last batches of paperwork. Can you see my fingers? Oh yeah. <laughs> It's like this. I just sent it off to uh, immigration for her parents. Hundreds and thousands of dollars to bring those two people into the United States. And paperwork you won't believe. You won't believe. They're going to come. He wants to paint. He's a painter. She likes making dresses. She wants to be a seamstress. They're close to 70. They have prayed to be in America their whole life. I say give them a chance. I say I'll pay for them to come in. I'll pay for their food. I'll pay for their housing. Just like I did for all of these other immigrants. Now they're paying it back. They're paying it forward. America is a better place because of the immigrants. Why shouldn't they be able to find citizenship? Their children are basically born here and the old immigration before Obama did the executive order would yank the mom and dad send them back to Mexico and the two little kids that were left here went in with relatives or into foster care that doesn't seem right so I'm not trying to be political I'm not trying to uh, lean one way or the other except I do believe in not taking advantage of anybody that's why I quit the Mormon church don't take advantage of anybody and I believe in being fair we are a nation of immigrants. Let's welcome new immigrants into our country with new ideas, new languages, new food, new ways of doing things. Now let me close here, totally off the subject, it's the way bipolar people are. I talked to five Mormon missionaries today. I had to change my pants before I came on. But anyway, anyway, none of them knew of any of the essays that the Mormon church has put out. The one little guy from who God knows where in some foreign country, he I don't care what people say. I said, no, no, you don't understand what I'm saying. People are not saying anything. Your church is saying, garments are silly. Book of Abraham, stupid. Joseph Smith, stupid. Polygamy, stupid. Not us. Your prophet has said that. I'm, I'm, uh, here's the reformed Egyptian. Um, um, um. And he looks at his partner, and his partner. Um, and I go, hey, to send you boys out here and make you look like a horse's ass, and you're going to run into people like me that are knowledgeable, headlines all over the world of how screwy your church is, and they're now admitting it, 
and they don't tell you guys, I don't think is very fair. And uh, so I told them, uh, is, is 40, are 40 wives enough for Joseph Smith, or do you think he should have had more? How about teenagers? Do you like him marrying 14-year-old girls? So anyway, I gave him just a little bit of a, uh, a news brief, uh, and uh, they had no idea. They're not allowed to read the paper, they're not allowed to look at the internet, and their letters from their families are not allowed to disclose it. It isn't sacred, folks. It's secret. The church is losing money, they're losing their ass, and they're throwing these uh, young missionaries under the bus. So anyway, I do still have health and enable Mayor on the Bones, Frank Williams Senius. Please allow uh, feelings for immigrants. Uh, yeah, they don't speak good English yet. Give them four or five years. I couldn't speak anything when I was in their country, and uh, they, they respected that. So let's welcome our immigrants. You can see that some of them turn out extremely beautiful. They're all working. They're all U.S. citizens. They're paying taxes. They're buying houses. My, ho my wife bought uh, you know, the houses and the cars. And, and Good Lord, welcome our brothers and sisters throughout the world who are immigrants. This is the Bard. Visit the Bard store. One of my customers, uh, customers one of my patrons, not a patron, <laughs> one of my viewers said he got the Bard button. He's wearing a Bard button, and I've got a Bard hat, so I know there's been two sales, Mark. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to die a rich man, I can tell. <laughs> anyway, Mark's doing good with the store. Again, I have nothing to do with it. I plug him a little bit here and there. Uh, he's a good man. So anyway, someone else bought a, uh, a button. I hope he doesn't return it for his money back. <laughs> Bard's gone. 